Hi, everyone. My name is Kristen Iverson. I'm a writer and a professor, a Colorado native, or almost. I moved here when I was three months old. And I'm also the author of a forthcoming book entitled Full Body Burden, Growing Up in the Shadow of Rocky Flats. I grew up in a neighborhood near Rocky Flats, near the shore of Stanley Lake. We later learned that our house was in one of the contaminated zones. Rocky Flats was the great mystery of my childhood. We never knew what was produced there or what was being released into the environment. Although many people in my neighborhood worked at the plant, no one talked about it. When I was older, like many of the kids I grew up with, I went to work at Rocky Flats. It was years before I fully understood what Rocky Flats produced and what it meant to the environment and to the health of local residents like my family, my neighbors, my co-workers, and my friends. I grew up on that land. I know how the winds can blast across that landscape. We had broken windows and shattered windshields as proof in my neighborhood and in the Rocky Flats employee parking lot. Wind is what brought Rocky Flats most directly to our doorstep. The sampling study we're talking about today found breathable particles of plutonium in two residential locations near Rocky Flats. One of those samples contained hot particles with high concentrations of plutonium in the crawl space of a home, near my old neighborhood, as a matter of fact. Despite ongoing insistence on the part of government officials, what we always suspected may be true. This study has profound implications, not only for the Rocky Flats National Wildlife Refuge, intended to soon open to the public, but for those of us who grew up near Rocky Flats, for those who live and work downwind of Rocky Flats, and for those who are new to the area. What does it mean to find plutonium particles in the crawl space of a home? We know that inhaling plut plutonium dust can significantly endanger one's health. Working in that space might affect people like plumbers, electricians, furnace installers, or people renovating their homes. But what if that dust is also present in carpets, furniture, other interior spaces, never mind the sand sandbox in the backyard? How many people, including children, might be at risk? If there's plutonium in the dust of one house downwind from Rocky Flats, I suspect there may be plutonium and dust in many other homes, or perhaps even schools or libraries, located in the areas known to be contaminated with plutonium released from Rocky Flats. Scientists from the Atomic Energy Commission, predecessor to the DOE themselves, produced a map of the contaminated area downwind of Rocky Flats. We deserve to know the truth about what health dangers might be lurking in the most ordinary living spaces, the places where we work and live every day. I am alarmed by the findings of this study. Further testing for breathable particles of plutonium must be done. I agree that the Rocky Flats Wildlife Refuge should be managed as open space and remain closed to the public. But I'm also deeply concerned about residential areas around Rocky Flats neighborhoods like the one where I grew up. I have two proposals that I want to put forth today. First, I believe that the Department of Energy should establish a program to sample and analyze indoor dust for plutonium content for anyone who requests it for a building located in an area defined as contaminated with plutonium released from Rocky Flats. This is not only the right thing to do, it's long overdue. Secondly, I propose that the Department of Energy provide ongoing testing and monitoring of the health of people who live near or grew up near Rocky Flats. No actual health studies have ever been done on people affected by Rocky Flats other than the workers, or some of the workers. In 1996, epidemiologist Richard W. Platt found excessive cancer incidents in downwind areas and called for ongoing surveillance of the incidence of cancer and other diseases in these exposed areas. This data supported previous studies and similar recommendations, but nothing like this has ever been done. The dose reconstruction study, referred to by the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment as health studies on Rocky Flats, was based on models and inferences. In fact, no one's health was studied. Not one person who grew up 
near Rocky Flats or lives near Rocky Flats has ever had their health study. I hope we can begin to move forward on proposals such as these and the other proposals presented here today. We deserve to have information as accurate and truthful as possible about what might be lurking in our homes, in our schools, in our buildings, in our bodies. Thank you. Woo!